I see where we're going. <laughs> I think I stand by the three words of like connection, isolation, as well as masks and lots of masks. Okay, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> The first word I would use to describe my experience with COVID is devastating just because of the massive loss of life we all saw. Um, then I would also describe it as humbling just because we're seen as such a technologically advanced world and the fact that our, everything turned upside down because of one small little virus is just a really humbling experience. And the last word I would use is tranquil just because I feel like the um, notion of isolation and quarantine kind of gave us a lot of time to self-reflect and kind of find peace within ourselves. Three words. Um, I think nature, memory, and guitar. Why guitar? Guitar because I bought my first guitar during the pandemic and I started learning by myself over that summer. Um, but three years later, I'm still not that great at it. But that was like the start of something new and I thought that was a really great experience. Depression, isolation, and garlic. Scary, isolating, resilient. Stay exhausting, impactful, and grow. So the pandemic for me summed up in three words. Family, New York, and pandas. The last one's kind of interesting because I actually moved into a new apartment. Um, you know, after that summer, the pandemic started. Um, myself and five other guys have moved into a new apartment. Um, I didn't know a couple of them going into this. and. We really bonded and I think COVID kind of, you know, having to isolate in our home really brought us closer together. Um, we ended up naming our house the Panda Palace because one of my friends was really addicted to pandas and it was had a weird fascination with them. So um, this is kind of one of the things I remember most during the pandemic, really growing closer with my friends in that house. Um, I would say transformative, surreal, and memorable. Isolating. Annoying. Endless. Change, long, and depressing. Big cough drops, a computer screen, and feeling isolated. I had cough drops basically every single day just because I always felt like I might have been coming down with something. And I felt like paranoid, so I'd just be popping them like every second I could. Um, a computer screen because I was constantly staring at it to talk to friends or go to class or like meet new students. And isolated because it was my first year. So I was trying to get to meet new people, but I never really saw them too often. Or we were always wearing masks and couldn't really communicate too well. So, yeah. Uh, using th three words to describe COVID, the first one is probably Zoom, because everybody was doing Zoom classes or using software systems like Teams for work or like internships or uh, classes in general. And the second one would probably be flight, as in like plane flight, because travel was like a little bit more difficult than usual. The third word I would use would be family, because I'm an international student and I actually got to spend a lot more time with my family during COVID than I was like used to for a couple, like since I came to America. So it was definitely a new experience. So, how would you describe your experience during the COVID pandemic in Hong Kong? Yeah, I would say going to Hong Kong during the pandemic is probably one of the most life-changing experiences in my entire life because that I traveled only a couple of days after my 21st birthday and I was thinking, wow, like this is my first ever, you know, sort of trip as an adult. Um, I went to Hong Kong and I had to quarantine there for 14 days. And at that time, Hong Kong had the longest quarantine period in the world, which was 21 days. Because I was vaccinated and boosted, um, I only had to quarantine for 14 days. But when I got there, when I, when I got to Los Angeles, where I was supposed to transfer to Hong Kong, something happened. My COVID test didn't have my middle name on it because CVS, where I had gotten the test, doesn't have an option to put my middle name. And the flight attendants for my flight to Hong Kong said that because that name didn't match the name of my passport, I couldn't board the flight. So that meant that I had to stay in a hotel in Los Angeles by myself for two nights before I could board the next flight to Hong Kong. And for me, that was sort of a really, not traumatizing, but an experience that I think I didn't really need to have <laughs> during a time when 
everything was already so hard. Um, once I arrived in Hong Kong, though, I, my quarantine hotel was also not that great because it was very small. Since Hong Kong is like a, a, a big city, but all like the housing, like every, all the apartments are really tiny. The hotels are not any different. The, the food every day was the same. Um, it got delivered to my door and I hated it, but I had to live with it because what else could I do? But after 14 days, I thought that, you know, it was actually a really nice experience looking back because I don't think that I'll ever be able to spend 14 days in a hotel by myself, you know, like any other time in the rest of my life, unless we have another pandemic, but God forbid we don't. Um, but yeah, I think overall it was a really like enlightening, eye-opening experience for me. And even though some parts of it were hard, in the end, I think I really enjoyed it. It was a valuable at this point, kind of, I guess, indifferent or neutral is probably a good word. It's kind of whatever comes at this point, I'll just, I'll take it and I'll go, cool. And then I'll just kind of keep doing my thing, which probably isn't the best thing, but it's kind of how it just life works now at this point. In a way, I wish it hadn't happened because it sucked for a lot of reasons um, and it made things more difficult for a lot of people. Um, but at the same time, I don't know what things would have been like if it hadn't happened because the only way that it wouldn't have happened is if we lived in an alternate universe where it didn't happen. There's no way to subtract it from what I've lived through. No. I'd say I felt a lot of ambivalence towards COVID. Um, it was like a lot of conflicting feelings. It definitely sucked because it took place in my second year at UVA. And I remember just having to go back early and then getting an email um, basically saying, don't come back in person. But there definitely was a lot of positives to it too, though I was able to see my family for a lot more. I was able to get a job in New York and then actually make new connections with people, despite how hard it was with the masks and sanitizer. I think COVID-19 is a widely misunderstood phenomenon because we consider COVID-19 in terms of the human cost it left behind and the economic damage it did, but we didn't consider the social cost of being isolated from the people you care about for so long. And I think we're still very much discovering the extent of the damage that being away from people for so long can have on the human mind. So when the pandemic first started, I really felt like the whole situation, I felt powerless throughout all of it because I feel like we had so many warnings and all we could do is sit and wait as all the cases kept rising and all the number of deaths kept going up. And it was really a scary time for me because I have family and friends who are at like higher risk of complications due to the virus. So it was definitely a really difficult um, and painful thing to watch unfold. And it's just become frustrating too because every time we think, you know, the virus is gone, restrictions can be lifted, we can go back to life as normal, we get another spike. And it's just, it's just a really overwhelming and frustrating experience overall. How I feel about COVID in general, um, I think it was definitely a challenging time because in the start of 2020 when COVID first hit, classes at school got cancelled and everybody moved online. Uh, everybody had to get used to the new lifestyle, um, to be more careful about social distancing and to keep your mask on. It was definitely a big change for everyone, but since I was, I am an international student, I went back home during COVID for over a year, which is more time than I've ever spent home in the past like eight years combined. So that's pretty crazy to think about. I stayed home for over a year, did an internship and got to spend a lot of time with my family, especially my parents. And I just, I felt much closer to my family than before because I used to only spend maybe like half a summer back home every year and I would come back to the States for school. So I would say COVID was obviously a very tough time for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people lost family members, a lot of people lost their jobs. There was a lot of hardship with COVID and that's not to be taken lightly at all. Um, 
However, I do think there are also a lot of positive experiences or um, positive effects of COVID. Um, I would say a lot of people learned a lot throughout COVID and a lot of people grow in a lot of ways, including me. But when we were back on grounds, um, I had my lab in person, but we, you know, due to the pandemic still being around, um, we still had to remain like socially distant. And um, I believe there are only like six people in my lab. So we we're all like, pretty spaced out. And, you know, we would, you know, try to uh, deal with, you know, the experiments and stuff that we would while keeping our distance and, you know, just trying to make it work in that way. But it, it ended up turning out being fine. And um, I was also a member of the Clutchmore Ensemble at UVA. And uh, on Wednesday and Monday nights, um, we would, uh, like, just go on Zoom and, like, do, like, the re our rehearsals and stuff like that through there. And we ended up, um, at the end of the semester, uh, like actually coming together at someone's house just to like put a recording of all the songs that we played together and everything. And it was such a fun experience to do that. And so a memory I uh, treasured during COVID was I was in, or, in an organization called Charge at UVA. And once a week, we would meet up in small groups outside to work out. Um, and we would start each workout session just going over what our lives were like, something positive that happened, something that we didn't like that happened to just like relate over what was happening and get our minds off of school, get our minds off of COVID, just relax, work out, and have a good time together. I think that it definitely taught me to appreciate a lot more of the little things in life that I'd taken for granted before. Being able to hang out with friends, I mean, just my own health and my family's health and happiness. So. Just learning to not take those things for granted. I wouldn't say that I grew as much during COVID-19. I think I grew more after COVID-19 because during COVID-19, I was stressed out, focused on the day-to-day -day of my existence and had no larger goals. But after COVID-19, where I was exposed more to the people that I once saw and knew, I realized that there was more beyond life than what I had been trapped in my own mind into thinking. The pandemic, I had an internship over the summer, so obviously I had to adapt to the situation and, you know, manage time by myself, set up different meetings on Zoom to meet with my co-workers, and it was definitely a hectic experience, but through that experience I learned a lot. I am definitely improved my time management skills, so that's the best thing that I got out of the pandemic. Same thing for me. For me, uh, in addition to the internship, I have a time difference that come in, comes in. So how to manage time is 100% important. Other than that, um, I improved my cooking skills. I'm a better chef now because I you know, to cook your own food. And then another important thing for me is like I actually learn how to work out in my own house. Yeah. One area of my life that I would say I grew a lot in would be intentionality. A lot of people had to learn how to maintain relationships and and or build new relationships throughout COVID um, since, you know, a lot of us were in quarantine, or pretty much all of us were in quarantine, and um, a lot of us were just communicating online. And so you really have to learn that in order to maintain relationships, you need to reach out to people. You need to make effort. And so, yeah, for me, it would be intentionality. Yeah, like I said earlier, I grew a lot. I just, uh, I really learned to be independent, be happy with myself, and yeah, it's really helped me just kind of going into college. It's really helped me just, you know, learn to be happy with myself and just learn to find happiness uh, through things I enjoy. And yeah, so that was one positive aspect, I guess, if you could find a positive aspect of COVID-19. Just being alone for that long you just have so much time to just think about everything in your life. So, a really cool um, and rewarding experience that I had during the pandemic was volunteering with the COVID-19 uh, community testing events. Um, and a lot of the communities in Charlottesville, the predominantly black and Hispanic communities that really lacked accessible um, testing, um, 
these programs were uh, there to provide free testing for a lot of the patients um, that needed this, um, that maybe didn't have transportation to um, places that were giving out testing or couldn't afford it, that maybe they weren't insured, and so they couldn't really receive this quality care. Um, I volunteered there and I really saw firsthand the impact that this could have. Um, it really gave me a greater appreciation for um, you know, advocacy for these communities as well as what community health can really mean. I think it sort of emphasized the idea of like start from where you're at um, because which was something that I tried to um, act off of um, before the pandemic but it sort of emphasized the idea of like you can't change what's already happened start from where you are right now um, and then I also have a lot of good memories with family and friends during the pandemic that probably would have happened differently um, without it, or not happened at all, and um, those things definitely affected um, how I grew. Um, I think before COVID, I was like pretty, like I would say more like quite introverted. But I feel like COVID actually made me less introverted of a person, and I think it was like a combination of not only like going to college, but also like. Um, I started to value like all of my relationships more and I started to really enjoy like meeting new people more because it was something that wasn't happening as often and I would just like cherish all of those times a lot more and yeah I think I just started to really put myself out there more and just like really really enjoy people's company so I think that was just something really nice that came out of it. So if you think of growing most things will grow up and go down. I kind of went sideways. I didn't get better, I didn't get worse, I just changed. I dropped the ball on some things, I picked up other things, but for the most part, I am just kind of a different person than I was at the start, which for better or for worse, it kind of is what it is now. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if growth is a great term, I just kind of like moved out from under the shade of a new tree that just grew. Any particular special memories that happened during the pandemic? Yeah, so actually the spring break where everyone got sent home, I was actually at UVA during that time. Um, I didn't go back home and I didn't have a place to stay, so my friend who's right behind the camera right now <laughs> invited me over to her place and we sort of spent that entire spring break together just cooking together every single day. Um, we started naming our pots and pans different names and walk through the recipes together. And that probably was like the first time I've actually cooked like every day for a long period of time because you know as first years we all have our unlimited meal plan. Um, but yeah like that time we weren't really like super close friends but it was sort of through that experience that we bonded and became closer. Um, we'd like sing at night, um, just like talk for hours and that, that was really fun. And at one point, me and her and also some of our other friends, we went to Humpback Mountain um, to, to hike. And my friend's tire, car tire broke. <laughs> so that was also like a once in a lifetime experience because we were on the hill um, when the tire burst. And we were trying to figure out how to you know, get a new tire or like pump the tire to, to make it work again. And through that struggle, like I think we really bonded. Like that was a really good way for us all to be. In the end, then we had to call like a, a truck to tow the car away, and our friend's dad ended up picking us up, and we all went home that way. But you know, through these experiences, that I feel like I was able to like get closer to people and making memories, and that it really great that COVID gave us the opportunity to do that. So one of the most memorable moments of the pandemic for me was really the end. Um, I think I'd just been waiting so long to. You know, really have everything be over and just see my friends again, um, be back in the community at UVA, just seeing everybody walking around. Um, and I, so towards the end at the time, I was volunteering with um, some of the community outreach programs at UVA, 
Um, and one of them was organizi organizing new um, vaccine clinics for a lot of the underserved uh, patient populations here in Charlottesville. Um, and I remember just walking in um, one of the first days they opened and seeing the bright lights and the people just in line to finally get the vaccine, really just be done with the pandemic. It was really just a kind of imagery of you know, everything that just accumulated in the pandemic, you know, all the stress, anxiety, um, all the challenges really just, you know, coming to an end, um, really just in this one moment. Um, that was a really special time for me, um, one of the more memorable uh, moments. One positive thing that I learned during the COVID pandemic was that because I had to stay at home and it really enhanced my relationship with my family and my sister, so we get to go on trips together, and I think that's something that wouldn't be possible if COVID didn't happen and if I'm still at UVA. So I think that's like one of the best things that happened during the pandemic for me. Probably same for me here, um, quality time with family. And I got a lot more sleep in the first, like, second and third year during the pandemic. And other than that, other good memories would probably be, we did a lot of traveling, a lot of um, different hiking trips into nature probably something that we would not have done without the pandemic. So, you know, with COVID um, being uh, present, um, you know, we would try to find ways. At, um, I'm part of it in fraternity uh, at my college. And um, even though majority of things were online, we still, you know, made sure to make, you know, the most out of it and be as social and connected as we could be. So we would try to plan like date nights or anything like that that we could do just to, you know, make the most and be fun in that way. Yeah. And it definitely forced us to be more creative when we tried to get together with people. Like for our 21st birthday party, we invited people over and we had the windows open in our garage and we had to set up little speed seekers because it was in the middle of January and very freezing outside. We were all wearing our winter coats in our garage. We had our birthday party with our masks on. So it forced us to come up with different ways for us to all be distinct but still see each other. Here. So one of my most positive memories from quarantine was actually right at the beginning of the pandemic. So flashback all the way to mid-March of 2020 when our spring break got extended um, indefinitely and we were just stuck at home and this was mid-March and then my birthday is actually at the end of March and so my parents felt bad that I couldn't really do anything and we couldn't really go we were kind of scared to go grocery shopping just because everybody was like frantically buying everything and just like everyone had their germs everywhere so what my parents did instead was they made the most like DIY cake ever using just like little pieces of chocolate so it wasn't really even a cake but it was just like the gesture was really sweet so like they wrote my name out in like blueberries like smushed out blueberries and it was just so funny to me that they put that much effort but it really like it was really one of the things that stuck out the most from my experience with the quarantine okay so I think like probably like two special sort of memories and times I remember one like when I was at home with my parents I read this like book that my dad really wanted to run wanted me to read um which I don't remember the title or author but it was basically this like super engaging book on prefixes and suffixes <laughs> it was so good and just changed the way I read so many other things like I realized that I just like understood the definitions of words that like literally never seen before so that was super fun and then I'd say another memory, like while I was at UVA, like my like first year, second semester, like when we were getting vaccinated, my friend and I had gone together. And I just remember like afterwards we were like, we want to go to Trader Joe's. And so we just like ran across the road, went to Trader Joe's, bought like an insane amount of flowers and we bought a bunch of cheese and we just were like prepared for finals. Like that was like, that was the vibes. Like, <laughs> so. Yeah, that was just good stuff from the COVID times. <laughs> so one good thing that came out of COVID was that I got to try so many different things because I had so much time on my hands. So I did things like, I do a new thing every day, like embroidery one day, crocheting the other. Um, I tried relay braces once. I was really bad at it. Um, I tried hiking and climbing, and I got to do a bunch of do new things that I usually wouldn't do outside of COVID, but it was a great opportunity. One precious moment or memory from 
the entirety of the pandemic was probably when I I remember when I was back home I would like sit down at the dinner table with my parents and all three of us would be there to like we might have been like ordering deliveries with like a like an app such as like you know um, delivery app and um, it was just really nice to be able to sit down with my parents and just eat a meal together because I definitely didn't really pay that much attention to such little moments before COVID. So one fun experience that I had during the pandemic was that I went to a golden retriever farm for one of my friend's birthdays and basically like at this farm is literally just a bunch of like baby golden retrievers and then like small golden retrievers and big golden retrievers and you just get to play with them and you can play with them as long as you want. It's super cute. So yeah, that was definitely the most fun for me. So during the pandemic, I couldn't really go anywhere and I couldn't really hang out with the people that I used to hang out with. What I did have for entertainment was taking walks near the stream that ran through my backyard. And one day I sat by the stream and skipped a stone across the surface. And I realized that even though that stone would sink to the bottom, there was this brief moment where it would be in the air weightless, free of everything else. And I realized that even in the midst of a pandemic where I would be as weighed down as that rock, I could still have my moments of levitation and freedom. And those are the moments that I chose to look for.
Yeah.